Hi everyone, welcome to the engineering information session for students who are hoping to transfer to engineering. We have a bit of an agenda for you today. Um, we just want to welcome you. I'm going to introduce the people who are here. Um, Dr. Little is going to talk about um, engineering and the disciplines available. Jason LaCour from our office is going to talk about um, uh, courses. I'm going to talk a little bit about student life and then we have a couple of students in engineering who are going to talk about their experiences. So um, Dr. Little, if you want to give a little wave. Um, Jason LaCour. Yeah, I'm Karen Hemsworth and Tio. And Hayden. So uh, we'll just get right into it. Dr. Little, do you want to go ahead? Sure. So first of all, thank you for uh, your interest in uh, engineering. I uh, just wanted to sort of give you an overview of what engineering is and what kind of career you might be uh, seeing if you were to follow uh, that pathway. Uh, there, primarily, it's a, engineering is a, is a problem identification, problem solving area. Uh, it, engineers use uh, technology to uh, and, and, and just basic mathematical thinking skills, uh, problem solving skills to uh, solve uh, problems that other people or they themselves identify and uh, then and, and then find solutions for those problems that uh, uh, resolve uh, pain or, or, or conflict with people. And uh, so, so the opportunity there is for you to uh, be a problem solver. And some of those problems that can be solved are, are big, uh, you know, uh, national scale, uh, global scale, all kinds of uh, people uh, that have had engineering uh, careers uh, have been uh, placed in, in situations where they're able to make some significant changes uh, to, to the way we do things. Well, if one thinks of uh, the invention of the telephone or the invention of the light, you can see that there's uh, lots of opportunity there for game changing uh, situations. Uh, there's a high demand for engineering skills. Engineers are known as problem solvers, problem uh, uh, de designers, and, and they, they know how to put things together in such a way that it's helpful for others. And so there's a high demand for uh, professional skills. Uh, very often, engineers work in a team environment, and uh, they, uh, they interact with others uh, from other disciplines of engineers uh, to other disciplines of uh, all over the map, scientists, uh, accountants, uh, managers, uh, just, just all over the place. Uh, engineers work with, uh, in teams uh, with other people to uh, develop the solutions and, and uh, answers to problems that, uh, that people have. Um, one of the things that uh, is a strong point for engineering is it is a professional degree. And uh, as you work through your uh, Bachelor of Engineering, uh, you're on a track to become a professional engineer. A uh, professional engineer in Nova Scotia means uh, you are able to do uh, professional engineering. So design work and signing off as uh, the responsible uh, partner for uh, the activity that you undertake, whether it be the design of, of some structure or some piece of equipment, um, those are things that professional engineers do and it's uh, by law. And in order to do those things, one has to be a, a professional engineer. All right. And we'll switch to the next slide. Thank you. So uh, again, uh, what might you be doing as an engineer? There are uh, all kinds of things what can do. In fact, the premier of the province of New Brunswick is an engineer. In fact, one of the uh, top leading curlers in Canada is an engineer. And so you can expect to find engineers almost anywhere, and uh, many of them do uh, professional engineering. Others of them have taken the problem solving skill set that they've learned and apply it to uh, all kinds of other uh, situations. But uh, certainly there is the area of design, designing components, designing pieces of equipment, designing processes, uh, designing uh, activities, designing maintenance routines, all kinds of uh, design activities where you're thinking through a problem and you're 
working out a solution or a process that that, that leads to a, a solution. So there's the design aspect of uh, of engineering. Uh, clearly, uh, engineers are found in, in maintenance and in operations, uh, uh, making things work, making making factories uh, do what they should do, uh, making weight lines for uh, surgery uh, work properly. Uh, engineers are involved in all these different aspects of of just functioning, all right? And, and uh, we go from there, there's uh, sales and marketing, uh, engineers, especially for technical equipment and uh, things like that. Uh, engineers are involved in that as well. Uh, lots of engineers do consulting. There's, uh, I've maybe put uh, consulting and entrepreneurship together. Engineers are involved when they have good ideas and those ideas uh, are of interest to other people, uh, they, they are able to either market them themselves as an entrepreneur uh, or they're able to put together um, a company of like-minded people that sort of do consulting skills. Uh, and and uh, so engineers are involved in that. And, and again, there's, a, there's an academic career as well. So a lot of people will take a, a Bachelor of Engineering and, and combine it with something else, sometimes, uh, for example, an MBA. Uh, others will combine it with uh, maybe education. Others will combine it uh, with the medical background. Uh, and so there's sort of the, the three levels are the, the Bachelor of Engineering. Uh, that's sort of a, a four-year uh, study program. Uh, then beyond that, there's the master's degree, and that would be more um, specialized. So you have studied uh, deeper into some specific area, and you're able to solve harder, uh, more challenging problems in that particular area. And then there would be the PhD level, and that PhD level would uh, allow people to solve uh, very specialized problems. And, and uh, uh, in any event, those are those are the that's the pathway uh, or the academic pathway, if you will, and, and these are all just different pathways that uh, engineers uh, can uh, follow. All right, thank you. Uh, when we look at Dalhousie University, uh, we offer these six uh, uh, disciplines in engineering, and uh, each of these uh, various disciplines would have. Uh, uh, areas of specialization. So, for example, in electrical engineering, uh, you can you can uh, study to just do the general electrical engineering activities, or uh, you can specialize in computer engineering. Uh, for example, civil engineering. There's there's the earth and the environment stream, uh, and then there's the infra infrastructure stream. So e each of these various disciplines. Uh, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, industrial engineering, civil, environmental, and mechanical uh, would all have uh, a core set of courses. And somewhere in the fourth year, you would specialize by taking uh, up to five, six uh, elective courses, which would allow you to uh, do some degree of specialization in a particular area that you might be interested in. All right. So uh, just some, some interesting facts, if you will. Uh, we, we talked about the, the Bachelor of Engineering. That's the first degree. Uh, that's, that's the one that uh, puts you on the path to be uh, eligible for professional, professional licensure. Uh, and, and we have at Dalhousie an accredited program. And uh, that accreditation is by a national standard. And uh, we, when we meet that standard, we allow that allows our students to follow the engineering training uh, pathway to professional engineering. Um, it, at Dalhousie, when you enter the program, you enter as uh, just in the in the general engineering field. You're not uh, a discipline specific, and at the end of uh, the first year. That's when you would uh, inform us as to which of those six disciplines you are interested in, and the process will take over. We rank order all students by their GPA, and we start at the top and, and uh, hand out uh, discipline placement positions until there aren't any more in that particular discipline. 
and then we work our way all the way down to, to the end. And so if you have a, a, a GPA after your first year of 3.5, uh, then you, you automatically get whatever your first choice is. And uh, it is a competitive process. And so the, the higher your GPA, the, the, the better it is uh, for you to uh, be likely to get your first choice. Uh, but even so, uh, lots of students get their first choice right on down to the 2.0 level, which is the, uh, which is the minimum GPA that uh, will allow people to enter uh, their third year. So uh, in order to graduate after your fourth year, you have to have a 2.0 GPA. In order to transition from second year to third year, you have to have a 2.0 GPA. And uh, because we have an associate university system, and so there's a lot of students that come into us from uh, the agricultural campus in Truro, from Acadia, from St. Francis, from uh, Cape Breton University, uh, from St. Mary's. Uh, since they all join us in year three, everybody after the end of year two must complete all of the courses in the first two years and have a GPA of 2.0 or better in order to move into third year. Um, engineering is, is a fairly standardized uh, course load, uh, not many electives uh, associated with it, particularly in, in the first three years. There are very few electives uh, available to you. Uh, in the fourth year, there is some room for uh, specialization in the particular um, discipline that you're interested in. Uh, but for the most part, uh, you will be taking either five or six courses a term. Uh, so it's a pretty heavy workload. Uh, it can be spread over uh, longer time periods if that's what your desire is and, and that's what you feel more comfortable doing. Uh, but uh, for the sort of a, a, a typical student, it takes uh, somewhere between four and five years uh, to finish their uh, specific uh, discipline with the BEng degree. And so you can see that it's uh, 138 credit hours, so it's kind of like an honors program. Uh, where your where your uh, your specialization is the discipline that you have uh, chosen, and then we'll continue on with that. All right. So I'll uh, uh, leave that with uh, you. If you have other questions, we can have time at the end, or you can uh, give us a, a shout at uh, engineering uh, uh, at dal.ca, and I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jason, and he'll take you from there. Hello everyone, my name is Jason LaCour. I'm the Undergraduate Administrative Coordinator for the Faculty of Engineering at Dalhousie University. And I am also the Academic Advisor for second year students. And as transfer students, you would potentially be a, a year one-ish or a year two-ish uh, student. So most likely you and I would have a conversation before you, or at least upon your transfer into engineering. So you can you can reach me at the email Dr. Little just provided engineering at dal.ca. So Dr. Little gave you kind of the big overview of the engineering program. I'm going to dig down into the weeds quite a bit here and talk about things that you as a as a first year or second year or even third year Dalhousie student in the Faculty of Science, or the Faculty of Arts or Computer Science, discuss some of the courses you may have already taken that can count towards your engineering degree. <clears throat> Now, when it comes to applying to engineering, there's basically two categories we look at to determine eligibility. The first is your GPA so far at Dalhousie. In order to be el eligible to transfer to engineering, you need to have a cumulative GPA of 2.50 or higher. So that is a that is a firm requirement. If your GPA is below 2.5, they will not allow you to transfer to engineering. And then the other thing that you need to have done is satisfy the high school requirements for admission to engineering. Now that can either be done via high school or maybe you didn't do physics in high school, but you decided, you know what, I'm going to take physics 1190 or 1290 here at Dalhousie. So in some combination of his of high school and university level courses, you need to satisfy the requirements there that I've listed on the screen. Academic English, pre-cal math 12, academic chemistry 12, academic physics 12, and then one additional academic subject. Many of you will have completed those, as I said, um, either in high school or in the university. Um, if you haven't, there, there is still a possibility of transferring to engineering. You would just have to maybe contact um, 
what used to be known as the College of Continuing Education at Dalhousie. I apologize, I lost the name of that organization. Maybe Karen will say it when she pops on. Open um, Learning. Open, uh, thank you. The Faculty of Open Learning. Uh, thank you, Dr. Little. Um, they offer university prep courses that could help you satisfy uh, these requirements if you don't currently meet them, but you want to go on and do engineering. So a lot of you will have taken in the course of your studies here at Dalhousie a writing course. Uh, and a writing course, you, I've got a ton of them listed down there below, and there are actually more than that list. Um, in pretty much every program at Dalhousie, students are required to take six credit hours of a writing course of writing course requirements. So if you're in the Bachelor of Science or the Bachelor of Arts programs, there's a very good chance that we can use one of the writing courses that you may have taken for your degree. For students overall, there are a couple of writing courses we will not or cannot accept into engineering, and those are courses like Sustainability 1000, uh, English 1100, which is a university writing course, and Science uh, 1111, which is a course on scientific writing. The reason that we can't accept them is we actually need that writing course to kind of cover double duty as both a writing requirement and, and a humanities course for the purposes of fulfilling our degree requirements. So for most of you, if you've done a writing course, we can use that one of those two writing courses you've done for engineering, but there are a couple courses that we cannot accept as engineering, and it means you would need to do another three hours of writing. Now, for many of you in the Bachelor of Science, you may have taken either first year physics or first year chemistry or both. When it comes to physics, the physics that we use in engineering is physics 1190 and physics 1290. Those are the calculus based physics courses offered at Dalhousie University that are usually taken by uh, science majors. And for chemistry, we accept the general chemistry courses Chem 1011 and Chem 1012, and we treat those as equivalent to the courses that are required for the engineering program. So if you completed physics one and two or chemistry one and two in your first year or second year here at Dalhousie, you can bring those courses over with you when you transfer one for one. For calculus, it's a little bit different. We have a fairly convoluted rule on how we accept calculus in as transfer credit. The basic rule is if you've done both math 1000 and you've done math 1010, which are calculus one and two, we will give you credit for math 1280, unless you earned an A minus or higher grade, so A minus or higher, in both math 1000 and math 1010, then we will give you credit also for our engineering calculus to math 1290. So generally math 1000 plus math 1010 is math 1280, but if you get an A minus or higher in both, so not an average of A minus or higher, but an A minus or higher in both, then we give both math 1280 and math 1290. The other way to get math 1290 as a transfer credit is to have completed math 1000, math 1010, and then any 2000 level mathematics course. And finally, one of the other classes we see a lot come in as a transfer credit is for our applied vector calculus course, which is uh, in the science versions of that course, you would need to have done both math 2001 and math 2002 to get applied vector calculus. Now, I guess the way to think about that is a student who's done Math 1000, Math 1010, Math 2001, and Math 20, 2002 would get credit for Math 1280, Math 1290, and ENGM 2101, which is our engineering vector calculus class. So we also accept some other math and uh, math courses as equivalent courses to courses we require for engineering. Uh, the first one is Math 1030, Linear Algebra. We accept that course as equivalent to our ENGM 1041 Applied Linear Algebra. For statistics, it's a combination of courses again to meet our requirement. If you've done, and I apologize for all the complicated ways I've written the numbers here, but these courses exist in a couple of different guises. If you've done stat, math or stat 1060 or math and stat 2060, 
and then you go on and have done math stat 2080, then we'll give you the equivalency for our applied probability and statistics class. One last math class is for our differential equations requirement in our degree, ENGM 2022. We will accept math 2120 and math 3120, which is ordinary differential equations and differential equations too, uh, as equivalent to our engineering differential equations course. Now you may have noticed a bit of a pattern here with some of these transfer equivalencies is that we have one engineering course that kind of requires two science courses to fulfill. The reason for that is basically the, the engineering versions of the course go beyond what you tend to get in that one session of introductory statistics or introductory differential equations. So there's more in the engineering courses than there is in the one faculty of science course, whether it's math or stats. And so you cover some of the stuff that you're going to do in ENGM 2022, our differential equations class, for example, across two classes in the math department. So that's that's the reason why we have these combinations resulting in one class in engineering. Some other courses we tend to see transfer in are courses such as CSCI 1110, which is a course that uh, computer science students take. That course is equivalent to our computer programming one course, ENGM 1081. So computer science majors also sometimes bring us CSCI 2110, which is data structures and algorithms, and that is equivalent to our engineering course, ENGM 2283 data structures and algorithms. This is a course that only electrical engineering students and industrial engineering students uh, take in engineering, but it, it can count. Um, finally, some folks who are doing like chemistry degrees before they start their transfer process over to engineering may have done organic chemistry one and two, chem 2401 and 2402. We will view completion of both of those classes as equivalent to chemical engineering 2203, organic chemistry for chemical engineering. You'll see that pattern has continued here. And finally, Earth 1080, which is a common science elective, is equivalent to a course called Mine 2200 in engineering. Mine 2200 is taken in the second year for students interested in civil or environmental engineering. So again, all those last three courses may or may not be useful depending on what placement you go into. So as you can see, there's a bunch of classes that will transfer into engineering. And then there's a bunch of classes that you've probably taken that probably don't have a home to go to in engineering. So of the 138 credit hours in the engineering degree, three credit hours of those are the writing one requirement that we mentioned you probably have transfer credit for. Then there's a mandatory writing two class called History 1971 that I guarantee you have not taken if you're considering a transfer to engineering. Then in some of the upper division programs, so in electrical and mechanical, for example, there's a three hour humanities requirement. So it's a humanities elective you can, which many of you will have taken a course that would probably satisfy that. But beyond that, everything else is either a physical sciences course, a mathematics course or engineering math course rather, an engineering course or an engineering technical elective in your years three and four program. So. We've kind of covered pretty much everything that could transfer over here. So what I guess you would you would look at if you're considering transferring to engineering is kind of take the information that's on these last couple of slides, look at your academic record, see what you've you've got that will transfer in and then compare it to the uh, academic core program sheet that you can find on go.engineering.dal.ca slash diploma. Uh, that'll take you to a direct link where you can look at the first two years of the engineering program. And you can see, you know, what what you've done and where you still need to go. After doing that, have it get in touch with me through engineering at Dell.ca or one of the advisors in the Bissett Center advising at Dell.ca. And we can help you see, you know, what your couple next couple of uh, semesters will look like. Now, for first year students who are considering a transferring from, say, the Faculty of Science or uh, over to the Faculty of Engineering, the odds are pretty good that if you do transfer for engineering, you are adding a year to the length of the degree you're getting. 
So if you were hoping to finish in four years, if you transfer to engineering, you're probably going to finish in five. However, if you as a student have taken Math 1000 and Math 1010 with grades of A minus or higher, you've done Chem 1011 and Chem 1012, and you've done Physics 1190 and Physics 1290 by the end of this winter term, you could apply for a summer entrance into engineering and then do the two remaining, uh, or the handful of remaining uh, first year classes over the summer term in person at Dalhousie in Halifax and be ready to start year two in the fall term. That's something you want to chat about, get in touch with me. One thing I did want to mention kind of very briefly was just the, I, I, I do think that non-engineering students tend to presume there's a stereotype of what an engineering student looks like, sounds like, talks like is. Uh, I have not found that to be the case. I have known basically every person of every background with every personality type in the engineering program since I have been here. That applies both to your faculty members as well as your potential fellow students in engineering. There's not one type of person who makes an engineer. Everybody has a pathway if designing, creating, and imagining, and actually physically building a better world is what you want to do. So if you've, you've, you've looked at the transfer credit equivalencies, you've talked to me or talked to one of the advisors in the BIST Center, you're ready to apply, what do you do? Go to Dell Online. So this is uh, where you go to register for courses and stuff like that. So just go there, click on the student menu and then start or uh, click on the admissions link in the student menu and then start or complete an application. On the next screen, you click new. And then when it asks you to select your application type, you're going to say Adele current slash returning student, which is what you are. And then when you're finishing the academic process you'll get to a point and it should be fairly straightforward and then when you get to planned course of study what you want to be careful here of is to select bachelor of engineering that's the halifax engineering program there is an option for a diploma in engineering if you select that you're going to Truro, which is wonderful and may be a great choice for you Truro has a great little engineering program and a great little campus you can do your first two years of engineering in Truro, transfer to halifax four years, three, four, and five. So if you want to study engineering, start studying engineering in Halifax, it's Bachelor of Engineering, Truro Diploma in Engineering. And then finish the application, hit submit, and off you go. If you meet the entrance requirements, you will be admitted to the program, assuming there's space. And I would direct you to, if you have questions about the specifics of the admissions um, process, contact admissions at dal.ca directly. They'll be able to help you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jatha. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about what I do. Um, so I'm Karen Hemsworth. I use she, her pronouns, uh, and I work in the undergraduate office with Dr. Little and with Jason. Uh, Jason takes care of all the technical things. I like to think I take care of the fun things. So I work with students to help other students. Um, we have a peer mentorship program. I do student advocacy. We have a student affairs committee where students bring up issues that they're having with um, with their academics. And then I have student society connections. So I have uh, Tio and Hayden here to talk about um, some of their connections and some of their experiences. Um, so I also have a, a very strong connection with the Bissett Student Success Center, as does Jason, uh, for helping our students. And we also have a Melda Murray Student Center, which is uh, Kind of a one-stop shop for anything that students uh, need. Um, lots of things happen on the upper campus, the Studley campus, and um, we try to make those things happen on the Sexton campus as well. So um, mental health services is very strong and very present on Sexton campus. Um, the International Center has hours there, the Writing Center, um, and then uh, Brooke who runs the Melbourne Murray Center, she also has workshops on Excel and um, helping people uh, with their um, with their resumes and job preparation, those sorts of things. So there are a whole crew of us uh, here to help students do well. My whole job is to help students do well and, and help you succeed. So um, I have Tio is going to introduce herself and um, and talk to you a little bit about her experience. And then Hayden's going to talk about his experience. Thanks. Thank you, Karen. Um, my name is Tio, and I'm in my third year of electrical engineering at Dalhousie. 
Um, I like Dal Eng because of the sense of community that we have here through different societies like DES, which is the Dalhousie Engineering Society, which Hayden will talk a little bit more about. Um, WE, which is the Women in Engineering Society, which I'm part of, and Jack.org, which is a great mental health organization, and that's just to name a few. Another thing that I love about engineering is that I get to be creative and something that I really like about Dalhousie is that as students we are given lots of opportunities to do that. For example, we have a makerspace on campus which has things like 3D printers and laser cutters and other CNC's which you can sign up for and use for free and this is great for if you're working on your own projects or working on a school design project. We also have clubs like our Formula One team and the Dalhousie Space Systems Lab, which is literally building and sending a satellite into space, and the Dalhousie Microtransat team, who is building a small boat to sail across the Atlantic Ocean, and lots more. Personally, some of the ways that I've been involved are through the Women in Engineering Society, where I serve as Vice President and have been a part of multiple WE-related events, such as Go End Girl, which is an annual outreach event for girls in grade school that might be looking to pursue engineering in the future, um, as well as the December 6th ceremony, where we have commemorated the lives of 14 women in engineering whose lives were lost at the massacre that happened over 30 years ago at Ecole Polytechnique. Um, you can also find me on the Dalhousie Space Systems team where I'm working on making circuit boards and coding for the electrical subcommittee. Um, thank you all for listening and I'm happy that you're considering Dal Eng. Now I will pass it over to Hayden. Cool, thank you Tio, thank you Karen. Hi everybody, my name is Hayden. I'm a second year electrical engineering student. And I really like engineering here at Dalhousie for a few reasons. One being that Sexton campus on its own is a nice community of almost entirely engineering students. And I tell people, I tell this to a lot of people, it's like instead of asking people what their major is or what they're studying, it's like, what discipline are you studying? And, and on that level, everybody can relate because we're all engineers. We all um, think similar ways in that respect. Uh, but as well, I like engineering because it's all very clearly applied science. And applied science means that um, there's practical applications to everything that you learn, and it means that the, the implications of what you can do with what you learn are, are very broad, um, and it gets you excited about what you can, what you can make and, uh, and what you can dream up and create solutions to, as Dr. Little was saying. So a couple of ways that I've been involved is, is one, as Tio said, I'm the, I'm the president of DES, and DES is a Diploma in Engineering Society, and Diploma means first and second year of engineering. So um, being in second year, uh, and we does manages events manages uh, academic concerns everything for first and second years orientation and so as being a first and second year student in engineering you're automatically a member but you can choose to be an executive and run for elections and be on the team of des that makes those decisions so that's one of the ways that i've been involved but i've also been involved um, similar to tio in the dallas space systems lab uh, for the canadian uh, satellite design competition i'm the team lead of the attitude determination and control subsystem so it's a long word for just determining the orientation of a satellite and automatically adjusting it but it's a great experience because we meet with students on a weekly basis we meet in person we talk about what we're working on and it allows us to get all of this engineering experience early in our education and uh, it gives us a really le a real leg up on what we're learning because we're able to say oh i recognize quaternions because we did that when we're trying to figure out a vector that points towards the sun. It's very obscure, but it's all very practical and applicable. So uh, with that, I'll pass it back to Karen and thank you for your time. Thanks, Hayden and Tia. So we're going to finish there. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can always email engineering at dell.ca. Um, we'll usually get back to you pretty quickly. Um, and just wanted to thank you for your time and your attention. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.